Sunday, starting at noon, pregame at 10. Brad Keithley is our guest. Uh, we talk every week with him about oil, gas, politics, and the budget. Today is no different. He joins us for two big segments starting right now. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Michael. How are you today? You know, not too bad. Not too bad at all. I mean, it's, uh, you know, in, in light of everything that's going on, we're, we're doing okay. Well, I want to I want to take one second and congratulate you and Terry on your new grandchild. That's just absolutely wonderful, and I'm so excited for you. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I uh, I uh, was pretty excited about it. I'm not one of those guys that's like I'm not old enough to be blah blah. I'm just I'm excited. I mean, this this is uh, this is the next phase in our life, and uh, I actually kind of had to chuckle. I look at my wife and I go, look. We'll have more of these, and then we can go home, and we'll be all by ourselves and quiet, and can enjoy ourselves, and give them, you know, spoil the kids rotten, and give them back to them. That's that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> and you've already started that, I bet. Yes, yes, absolutely. We spoiled her rotten, and then said, "Okay, we'll see you later. Gotta go." So, it's uh, it's funny. It's funny stuff. Well, uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I know you uh, had a great show last week. I really appreciate you filling in for me. Thank you so much. Um, but I got I to gotta say, um, it's, 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 it's getting, it's even getting worse. Every time I turn around, it seems like it's one more thing that, uh, that we, uh, that we're going to have to deal with here is the government just refuses to, uh, to try and live within its means. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on today. Well, let's talk about, about what's going on with the permanent fund earnings stream. I think that's where, uh, we need to focus and Alaskans need to focus as we go forward even if we implement Hammond 5050 or some variation of Hammond 5050, an increasing amount of our revenue stream in the state is going to come from the permanent fund earnings. Under Hammond 5050, the earnings stream is, fit, is split 50% between government and 50% of the people to continue to fund the dividend as it has been in the past. But we need to, we need to be concerned about what that earnings stream is. And, and frankly, projecting the earnings stream is sort of like projecting oil prices right I, oil right. prices you sort of look you sort of look out there in the future and say what are oil prices going to be what's the revenue stream going to be to the state you do the same thing with the permanent fund earnings you look out there in the future and say okay what are stock market returns going to be uh, what are what are bond returns going to be what are the returns on these alternate investments that uh, that the permanent fund is in and and sort of project what permanent fund what the what the earnings stream is going to be off the permanent fund side and just like we've gone through we're we're going through a phase where oil prices are down significantly uh, and so our oil earnings are down there was a meeting last week of the Permanent Fund Board, the annual meeting of the Permanent Fund Board, where they had their consultants come in and talk uh, about where they see earnings going. And the consultants uh, advised them that they, that they see the Permanent Fund earnings stream uh, declining uh, in, the, in, the, in the future. Over the last, uh, oh, geez, decades, uh, the Permanent Fund Board has had a policy of try of, of a goal of achieving an earnings stream that is five percent plus inflation uh, in, right. in economic terms uh, the five percent is called the real rate of return and then you add inflation to uh, to get the nominal rate of return so that if you've got inflation of of two percent the, the overall return you want to achieve is seven percent you want to achieve that 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 five percent return plus the plus the inflation adjustment and, and historically, the Permanent Fund Corporation has done a relatively good job of that. Some years are down, some years are up. What happened last week is their consultants came in uh, and said, look, you know, the 5% real rate of return that you've, that you've had as a target uh, is, is too aggressive. We, we believe is too aggressive. We believe going forward in the economic climate and in the investment climate uh, that we see out there, uh, the, real rate, the real rate of return you're going to be able to achieve is 4.5%. So if inflation is 2%, the, real, the overall rate of return you're going to be able to achieve out there is 6.5% less than 2. The real rate of return is going to be 4.5%. And that's a significant change. You wouldn't think going from 5% to 4.5% is, is all that huge. But given the size of our permanent fund, um, uh, it's pretty big. Uh, going yeah. from 5% to 4.5% is a loss of like $200 million in the other 50%. So right. it's a it's 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 a big hit. Well, and and I think that was the question as to whether or not the permanent fund board was going to 
uh, take, you know, they were trying to take that into consideration. What were they going to do? Um, and, and, and how does this play into, um, our discussion that we've had in the past on the Hammond 50, 50 plan? I mean, do you, do you see that having an impact on that as, uh, you know, I- I- in a significant way? Well, it, it does in this sense, uh, our legislature and governor are proving that they're incapable of, of getting spending down even to the long-term sustainable budget level that you that you have if you assume a 5% real rate of return coming out of the permanent fund earnings stream. If you lop off another half percent uh, out of that earnings stream and go to 4.5%, they failed getting down to the down to the uh, a revenue stream that could be supported by five percent. They're going to fail getting down to a revenue stream getting down to four point five percent. It moves the goal uh, that much farther out. And and if you if you see that gap as some do as 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 need to be filled with new revenues, then it makes that gap bigger uh, right. uh, going forward. So it's it it, it is. It is the same thing. Let me let me say this. It's the same thing. I, I probably don't have the numbers right, but it's the same thing. If if the projections were we were going to get back to eighty dollar oil, or to pick a number, we're going to get back to sixty dollar oil, and the consultants that you rely on coming in and say, "Oh no, we're not going to get there. We're only going to get to forty dollar oil." That right. it, it's it's the it's the same type of directional hit uh, that you've got on your projected earnings stream. Uh, that uh, that if, if if oil was going down, L- let me say let me say that this also affects the cost side. So not only not only is this projection br- going to bring revenues down, or, or we're projected to lowering in revenues, it also affects the cost side. The retirement accounts, uh, the state retirement accounts, uh, uh, have a, a a an investment level in them. We contribute into that investment level. Uh, and then they go out. The, the revenue department of revenue goes out and invests invests that that investment level to generate returns that then are used to reduce the amount of money we need to we need to be contributing annually. The state needs to be contributing contributing annually into the retirement accounts. Right. And 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 that projected return, that projected income stream off the retirement uh, investment level. Uh, is is set in the same way as the permanent fund corporations. So if you say that that the earnings environment we're going into on the permanent fund is going to go down, then the earnings retirement then the then the earnings uh, uh, environment we're going to go into on the retirement account is going to go down. We're not going to generate the same level of earnings from the retirement corpus as we have in the past which means the annual level of contributions that's going to need to come out of the budget to fund our retirement obligations is going to be higher. Right. So you've got you're going to have you're going to have a decreasing revenue uh, 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 environment coming out of this and you're going to have an increasing cost environment coming coming out of this because of what's going on in the retirement account. And that's those are going the wrong direction from 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 what we need uh, uh, to be to be getting at in this state in order to in order to get some sort of fiscal fiscal balance going on. So it's it it, it, it got notice in the Juno Empire. Uh, James Brooks did an excellent column in the Juno Empire on on the decision. It got noticed in uh, KTUU, uh, but it hasn't really. I mean this this issue with re, with the permanent fund board hasn't really gotten the the attention it deserves given its significance uh, uh, to what it means to the state's fiscal picture going forward. Right. So this initial analysis came out last week during the meeting of the permanent fund board. Um, and uh, the question was when the original article came out was, OK, so what are they going to do now that they've had this this proposal and this this advi- this advice laid in front of them? What are they going to do? And it turns out when it was all said and done, they said, no, we'll just keep going the way we're going to go. Yeah, but that's really, I mean, they can say that, but the market's going to do what the market's going to do. It's sort of like it's sort of like somebody saying in revenue, yeah, okay, yeah, you're telling me that, that $60 oil is going to be $50 oil, and we'll just keep going. We'll just keep spending the same way we always have because we want it to be $60 oil, um, but – but you know, if, if oil goes to fifty dollars, um, then then you're going to have to deal with the consequence of oil going to fifty dollars. 
that's sort of the same thing that's going on over on the on the permanent fund board and the earnings stream side. Yeah, the board may say that we continue what to want to earn a five percent return, real return um, after inflation, and and we're going to continue to keep that as our goal. But if the markets are only going to give you, if the investment is only going to give you for a four point five percent real rate of return, that's what you're going to have to live with. So so estimating, you know, continuing spending based upon the assumption that you're going to get a 5% rate of return uh, when you're only going to, when, 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 when those looking into the crystal ball say you're only going to get a 4.5% return is just foolishness. I mean, you're, 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 you're just digging your hole deeper now on the other side, now on the permanent fund earnings stream side, uh, you're only, you're digging the hole deeper, sort of like we did uh, when, you know, oil fell down to, and down to the fifty dollar mark, and people kept saying, "Oh no, it'll bounce back up to a hundred, so let's keep spending." Right. I, we're still <laughs> we're still factoring budgets on a hundred and seventeen dollar barrel oil, even though the market says it's fifty, right? Right. So that's the same thing on the earnings stream. I mean, this is this is a significant issue. Now, you know, one thing one thing to to focus on is is the in, is, is the projections we're getting from the consultants we've historically used. Is that is that good advice or is that not good advice? Do we have our, our, you know, if somebody came over on the oil side and said it's going to be fifty dollar oil, is that somebody you trust to 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 to, to say that it's going to be fifty dollar oil to make your you make your plans based on that, or do you are are other people in the consensus and the better forecasters saying it's sixty dollar oil? So, I, to me, if I were a member of the permanent fund uh, board corporation board, I'd be saying get me some more consultants. Let's 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 talk about this issue further because it's so significant. But if that is, in fact, where the market's going, and it's not, it's not only – I don't only see this in this article. Out there in the general world, I see uh, boards uh, that, that manage investment funds generally being more cautious. If right. that is where the world's going in terms of returns, we need to factor that in. We need to, we need to take that into account in the state budget now that we're switching over or, or transitioning over to, to having a portion of the budget. Even under Hammond 5050, a portion of the budget uh, tied to permanent fund earnings. So, where does this leave us? Um, I mean, as a state, as we watch this play out, because again, um, we're, compa- we're 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 counting on uh, the cur- the permanent fund earnings being a, a large portion. Whether you know you're advocating the Hammond 5050 plan or some of the other plans that politicians have floated down there, using a portion of the earnings reserve to fund government. Where does this leave us now that that the advice has been given, the advice has been ignored? Where does that leave us moving forward? Well, it, it leaves us that 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 people who who are involved in these issues, people who want to understand state finances, people who talk about state finances, people who vote on state finances, people who vote on legislators need to start paying attention to the permanent fund earnings side and, and the projections that are on the permanent fund earnings side. The board needs to take that into account. But separate and apart from that, the legislature and the governor need to take that into account going forward in terms of estimating our revenues. If, if, if we've been estimating revenues on 5% real rate of return, we need to, we need to and, and this is good advice, we need to scale it back to 4.5%. Frankly, that's going to that's gonna show – Against current spending levels, that's going to show an even higher deficit than we've been showing. That's going to raise uh, uh, more discussion about new revenues to fill in the blank, to fill in the gap. But we need to be realistic about it. The last thing we need to be doing is going down the road thinking that you know, thinking that oh, okay, we've got all this in hand now, and you know, we've got we've got a realistic revenue projection going forward, and not being and not using a realistic revenue projection. So. We need to start factoring this in the budget discussion. You and I need to start talking about it on the show. Other need, other people need to start talking about it as well. What is the projected earnings level that we're going to get off the permanent fund going forward? What's that going to do for our revenue level? Well, and and I think this is going to be this is the this is the big question because again, if we can, we've still got to get this this uh, discussion on utilizing a, a portion of the earnings reserve to talk about it in the 50-50 plan uh, because a lot of politicians are still just dead set on this idea that new revenues are the only answer. And and that, to me, is kind of the the scariest part of this whole discussion is that they, they're kind of pushing these kind of talks to the wayside. They're not paying as much attention to yep. this part of it as they are to the new revenue part of it. 
Absolutely. And and we've got to be focused on what our base revenues are. I mean, base revenues in terms of oil, we now need to factor in permanent the permanent fund earnings stream uh, at least on the Hammond 50/50 basis. We need to be start we need to start factoring in projections of permanent fund earnings as well. Um, and if we've got just like if we've got a hole on the revenue side, on the oil revenue side, if we're seeing that production's falling off or that prices are falling off, we need to take that into account. We need to start doing that also on the permanent fund earnings stream side. If we see that we're not going to get the 5% of return, rate of return, real rate of return, it's going to be lower than that. We need to take that into account. Brad Keithley is our guest. Uh, we want to continue this discussion on where we go from here. I want to tell Brad a little bit. Last night on my way home from the airport, I got a phone call from a uh, got a got a phone call from a uh, a survey so i want to talk a little bit about that as well we're going to continue with brad keithley our discussions of a state nature that's directly ahead brad keithley uh, continues on the airwaves with us here we're about to talk about the special session and where do we go how do we find the how do we find the fiscal center of Alaska's situation? Brad, yesterday on the way from the airport, I got a phone call. I kept getting this call from this number, and I kept missing it. And every time I call it back, it would go nowhere. Turns out it was some kind of survey that was being done, some kind of paid survey. Um, and uh, they were asking a lot of questions about the state of Alaska. How did we feel about the job that the legislature was doing? How did we feel about Governor Walker? What did we think we needed? Uh, it was pretty interesting. I, I'm not. I have a hint that I think I know who actually paid for the survey, but I think in his if his chuckles indicated anything to me when I answered some of these questions kind of vehemently, uh, I think he was probably getting a lot of these same answers on Alaskans being very worried about the economy and thinking that basically the governor has done a very poor job so far at pulling us into the uh, right direction. Yeah, I bet that was fun for you, wasn't it? I mean, oh, man, it was, <laughs> it, it was it passed hysterical. the drive time pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, it was hysterical. I mean, it was about 15, 20 minutes, and it was this poor guy, by the time I was done, I'm like, that's not an answer. None of those answers are answers I want to give. I want to give an answer that says this. And he's like, well, I guess I could probably put it closest to definitely does not approve. Yep, that pretty much sums <laughs> it up right there. But, I mean, was this Terry is, this in the is car, what... was, was, was sorry, Terry in the car with you? Was Terry in the yeah, car Terry, with you? Yeah, she was smiling the whole time. She was laughing the whole time because it was <laughs> just one of those things where I'm like, definitely d did not agree, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, the whole essence of is, you know, again, putting us back into this conversation of not whether or not we should have new revenues, but what's the best new revenue? And, and of course, I did pick the flat tax uh, uh, on that. But, I mean, I think this is the argument that we've become locked into. Uh, now the governor is talking about his special sessions. Uh, it's only including the uh, his head tax and SB 54. But now he's saying, well, it doesn't mean he can't add things to it later on. Yeah, it's I, I know this is not a discussion that 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 you either you or I like. Certainly, it's not a discussion that 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 listeners uh, some listeners like certainly it's not a discussion that that some of my friends like uh, when I start talking about what's the best way to raise new revenue. But here's the here's the reality we're dealing in, Michael. We're, we're dealing in a reality where the Senate Republicans, sort of the last line of defense, people who ran in 2012, 2014 and in the 2016 elections saying, don't worry, we're on the job, elect us, we'll cut spending we don't need to go to new revenues. You know, we're, we're, we're your guys. Don't worry about us. Uh, as the House was turning Democrat, as the governor was going off the rails, the Senate Republicans standing up there and saying, we're the ones that are going to stop it. Those guys voted 12 to 2, the Senate Republicans, 12 to 2 this last session to cut the PFD instead of cut spending further. Right. They voted to go to new revenues this last session instead of cut spending further. Now, a lot of my friends are out in the valley and they go, "Oh my gosh, we'll just stand up to that. We'll, you know, we'll we'll stop that. We can't we can't have new revenues." Well, guys, two of your three senators were on the right side of that. Right. But those were the only two those were the only two in the entire state that were on the right side of that. To 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 change that course, to change the course of the Senate You've got to defeat something like six senators, six Republican senators, with defeat them, defeat current incumbents, and replace them with 
uh, with new senators who are going to vote the right way, who are going to join the two that voted against uh, cutting the PFD instead of cutting spending further. And the odds of – you only got 10 senators up for election. The odds of, of turning around six seats, six of those 10, turning them around and turning them into – uh, rock R. Well, actually, one of those is even one of those is is one of the already Rock R. So six out of nine, you got to turn two thirds of the of the seats that are up for election around from where they are and get them to vote uh, uh, with the with the two R's to to, to change that outcome. It's not going to happen. So as much as you want, as people want to rail at me about, oh, you can't talk about new spending. Who are you to, you know, or uh, new revenues? Who are you to talk about new revenues? We're gonna, we're gonna cut it down. As much as you want to, as much as you want to get mad at me about that, it's reality. It's not me. It's the Senate Republicans that we all elected to to do the job of cutting spending further. They didn't do it. They're not gonna do it. They've sort of run out of steam. So right. what, what do you do in that situation? You, you've got to face reality. You've got to start talking about what's the best way. If we're going down this road, and it's not me that's putting us down this road. It's the Senate R's that are putting us down this road. If we're going down this road, we've got to face reality and talk about what's the best way to do it because we can make this situation worse. Cutting the PFD, according to ICER, cutting the PFD has the largest adverse effect on the overall economy of, of all of the new revenue options. Largest adverse effect overall economy. We're in a recession already. Why do you want to do something that's going to have the largest adverse effect on the overall economy? Right. It has it it, it 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 is the by far, according to Iser, by far has the worst impact on Alaska families. Worst impact on Alaska families. Why do you want to do something? We're in a recession. Why do you want to do something that has the worst impact? On Alaska families, so right. it, it, we've got to be talking about we've got to be talking about a better way. It's not me that's doing it. It's not you that's doing it. It's not the radio station. It's not you know anybody. It's the Senate R's who failed to do the job they said they were going to do in 2012, 2014, and 2016. They failed. They aren't going to do it. They stopped. So we've got to face reality, and we've got to start talking about a better way. And and you and I have talked about it on the show before. I'm sure we'll talk about it in the future. But I believe a, fa a flat tax, a tax that takes an equal percent from, from all Alaskans, including those that otherwise don't pay federal income taxes, um, and there's ways to do that, a flat tax that takes an equal percentage from all Alaskans is the best way to do it. It is the most fair. It is, it is the one that doesn't skew the revenue coming from either higher-income Alaskans or lower-income Alaskans. It takes it equally as a percentage across the board. It gives everybody an equal, a, a proportionate vested interest in government spending. If the government's going to spend another dollar, 2.5% of it's going to come from you, 2.5% of it's going to come from me. We all have an e – it's not like you're going to have to pay 5% and I get to pay none. All, we right. all have a vested, a vested interest, percentage interest, in dealing with increased spending. So I think flat tax is the right answer. Don't want to be talking about it. You know, you and I have talked until we're blue in the face about being able to cut spending. Where do we cut spending? Ham and 50-50 as, as, a, as a new revenue approach and being able to deal with it that way. But the Senate Republicans, the ones we all counted on to draw the line, didn't do it. So we've got to face up to reality. Well, and it's interesting because I think some people are starting to get this point. You, you have a post up from Friday uh, on your blog where you're talking about um, – you know, some conversations and back and forths on Twitter uh, talking about, you know, how do we find this this center of the, of the of the Alaska fiscal problem and the solution? How do we find that? And even you point out that there's uh, that even uh, some of our representatives are finally starting to get it uh, in the form that the flat tax is a good compromise. But the, the, the bottom line is you've got to get people on board in both houses to be able to do it. And and this this is not something that they even really touched on they don't even really want to talk about that they're all about the income tax always it seems like always about protecting that upper 20 percent well it's yeah it's either it's you go to go to you go to extremes right the the senate wants to cut the pfd period end a statement end a discussion cut the pfd well that's great if you're the upper 20 percent it takes less than for an average family of four it takes less than two percent of your income heck i'd be for that all day long 
uh, if, I, if I were just looking at my own personal interest, but it takes 30% of the income, average family of four, 30% of the income out of the lowest 20% out of the lowest 20% of Alaskans, 12% out of the out of the next 20, 8% out of the next 20, and 5% out of the upper middle, still double what it's taking out of the out of the top 20%. So is that is that fair? No, it just slides it just slides the responsibility down to middle and lower income Alaskans for paying for government. The top 20% gets off gets off right. scot free. Well, the, the other extremes. Uh, go ahead. Well, I say, and the worst part about that is, is that it doesn't even fill the gap all the way. That's the situation. Yep. It doesn't even fix the problem. Yep. And then, and then the, and then the other extreme is the house people in the house who want to talk about we're going to go to a pure income tax. We want a pure income tax, right? Progressive income tax, right? Uh, because that's the fair way to do it. Well, that's great if you're in, the, if you're in the, in the, in the in sort of the lower middle class because you don't the lower forty percent because you don't pay any income tax. It's all going to be borne by the middle class, the upper middle, and the and and the top twenty percent. So it's so so they're sitting there going, yeah, yeah, get somebody else to pay for it. Um, and 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 that's their that's their approach to it, and they can come up with all sorts of reasons why that's fair and just and reasonable. But the, but the but the, the bottom line is they're shifting the burden to somebody else. To me, and and this is frankly why I think the Twitter exchange sort of landed there. To me, the fairest approach is the flat tax. It doesn't say tax the rich, you know, leave forty percent of Alaskans untaxed, and so they'll just want more and more government services. Uh, tax the rich and have them pay for all it. And it doesn't do that. It doesn't do what the Senate wants to do, which is tax the middle, the, the middle income Alaskans and, and the lower income Alaskans through PFD cuts and, and leave the top 20 percent alone. By the way, the top 20 percent will want more government services, too, because they won't have to pay much for them. Um, it doesn't do either of those. It's, it treats all Alaskans the same. It treats all Alaskans fairly and, and, and asks them each to contribute a, a percentage share. And the other thing, just to go back to that, the other thing that I think is so is so positive about a flat tax, everybody has a proportionate level of skin in the game. I mean, somebody, some people who want to say that the, that the PFD cuts better because everybody has skin in the game, well, if you're in the top 20 percent, you don't have much skin. If you're in the bottom 20 percent, you, you're giving up an arm and a leg and you know part of your torso. So it, it, what a flat tax does is put everybody in on an equal percentage. You want to, you want to spend another dollar. Uh, or another $100 uh, in government spending, it's going to come out of everybody's pocket at 2.5% if you're, if you're gearing it to raise the same amount of revenue that the Senate's raised uh, in their PFD cut. So you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out of everybody's pocket at 2.5%. And everybody then's going to say, oh, my gosh, no, don't, don't spend it on that, as opposed to under a PFD cut or under an income tax where half the population is going to say, gosh, don't do that. And the other half is going to say, eh, hey, what's the heck? You know, it's only another 2% out of my – or another little bit out of my pocket. I can afford that. It right. gives everybody an equal stake in the game. Again, Brad, uh, and I, I don't want to beat the dead horse, but, uh, again, even if we do end up with the flat tax and everything else, we've still got bigger problems. And 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 <laughs> – and yep. and the, and and what they're not seeing is that we're still going to have all these issues because it's not going to fill the gap completely. So this really ends up being just step one of a bigger problem. It does. And 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 to go back to our first segment, if the permanent fund earnings stream is not going to be as robust as we have as 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 we have counted on, if it's not going to have a five percent real rate of return, return is we're going to go down to a four point five percent return. As I said, that gives us additional revenue problems and it gives us additional cost problems because we're going to have to do something on the retirement accounts. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to buck up the contributions we make on the retirement accounts. So, yeah, we got we got problems ahead, um, uh, serious problems ahead. It's not just oil. It is the fact we can't seem to get spending under control um, and, and, and we keep going into these deficit situations because we can't get spending under control or we can't we can't figure out a fair uh, uh, a revenue solution. We, we, you and I are going to be talking about this for a long time. The revenue side's going down. The cost side's going up. Uh, the Senate hasn't held the line. The Senate, the last line of defense, hasn't held the line. It is hour three. 